going on everybody rj ochoa here from sb nations blogging the boys.com hope all is well wherever you are we hope you're happy safe healthy and that you enjoy the dallas cowboys practicing once again with the los angeles chargers second straight day of joint practice with the cowboys and the chargers on thursday obviously they practiced together on wednesday we had a recap video about that actually it was a live show here on the blog of the boys youtube channel make sure you do subscribe bit of a scheduling conflict today so we decided to record this thing and get it up so without further ado let's go ahead and get to it once again Cowboys Chargers practicing with each other obviously they have the preseason game against one another on Saturday night that kicks off at 9 p.m central time so get a pot of coffee going and we will be here as soon as the game is over for the live post game show so first things first there was um almost a fight almost kind of like almost you know the Cowboys obviously had a, a physical practice against the Denver Broncos last week and, and then obviously the the million penalties on, on Saturday night but uh but no fight but a bit of an almost skirmish sort of thing um that uh you know thankfully didn't develop into much but watch Terrence Steele here um he's the subject You know, I said Terrence Steele was the subject, but I meant the subject of the punch, the, the kind of target of the punch. Uh, Sebastian Joseph Day, Chargers defensive lineman, threw a punch at Terrence Steele, and I've made this joke already on social media, but I have to make it here. I'm contractually obligated. Thankfully, Terrence is made of Steele. Anyway, um, watch it again one more time. Like I said, pay attention to Terrence Steele. Um, there, there's a punch thrown at him, but good job on him. Mike McCarthy has preached discipline, and it's nice to see a fight not totally break out. Good to see. Kudos to Terrence Steele, like I said, holding to his discipline. Uh, better day offensively the Dallas Cowboys. And, and look, this is the time of year, and we've had some comments kind of mention this, where you can find a clip to prove anything you want, right? You can find a clip. There's one that the Charger social account uh, shared of Trayvon Diggs not exactly having a great moment. So you can find a clip of anything you want and say, oh, so-and-so sucks, so-and-so's trash, so-and-so's going off. Look at this. Look at this catch. Look at this miss, whatever. It's just, it's just the way it is. And that's why you can't take anything that you see or hear this time of year totally seriously. We've been talking about it from day one. You can take what you hear. You can take what you see. We can take all of it together, and we can contextually apply it to the way we are approaching looking at this roster, looking at this team, defining what our expectations are, et cetera, et cetera. And Wednesday was not the best day for the Cowboys' offense. It wasn't the best day for the Chargers' offense either, obviously, because the Cowboys' defense had so much success. But it felt like the Cowboys' offense bounced back just a little bit on Thursday. Dak Prescott found Dalton Schultz for this touchdown. You know, it's the time of year where people are kind of getting ready to have their fantasy drafts. I know, you know, in my, the leagues I'm in, my league of record, I'm reigning champion, no big deal, only three-time champion. Again, no big deal. Seriously, stop complimenting me. I won't take it. Again, I'm the only only three-time champion. But um, Dalton Schultz is, is somebody who's going to catch, uh, you know, that tweet actually came from David Hellman of Fox Sports, and he, he tweeted this a few weeks ago. Dalton Schultz is going to catch like 100 passes. He's, he's going to, I mean, I think we could be looking at a thousand-yard receiver in Dalton Schultz here in 2022. We could look at somebody who maybe flirts with double-digit touchdowns, and it isn't just that Dalton Schultz is a good player. I'm not trying to take away from that. I think he is a very good player, so obviously a lot of it revolves around and is impacted by his skill set. You have to be good enough to be able to do these sorts of things but a lot of it is just going to be the opportunity and how there isn't anybody to, to kind of absorb the opportunity uh the availability away from Dalton Schultz the way it was last year this is the CeeDee Lamb Dalton Schultz show at least until Michael Gallup gets back which by the way uh while we are on the subject Michael Gallup was working out after practice on the field with Dak Prescott running routes great to see I don't think any of us should should let our expectations or let our hype or let our our hopes and dreams get away from us this is all part of the process we have to remain 
patient when it comes to Michael Gallup, day by day, step by step. Um, you know, patience is a virtue. We, we, we cannot, we're only going to let ourselves be hurt in the process if we allow our hopes to, to run away from us. So, uh, but nevertheless, a very good thing to see Michael Gallup getting that work in. Uh, but, but back to Dalton Schultz, again, he's going to have an incredibly productive year. So I know we don't like focus on fantasy football, and that's not really the point this, this was set out to make, but Dalton Schultz is going to have a very productive year for the Dallas Cowboys in all likelihood. So just keep that in mind. Uh, he was not the only person who caught a touchdown from Dak Prescott today. In fact, the last play of practice, uh, Cowboys working on Hail Mary situations. Uh, we've never really seen that, you know, in, in a game play itself out. Um, you know, it, it only happens rarely across the league as a whole. But Dak Prescott looking for Dennis Houston, and he found him for the Hail Mary. Good for Dennis Houston. I'm a Houston Astros fan, so it's nice to see Cowboys fans like, yeah, go Houston. Uh, you know, I know that's low hanging fruit, but whatever. I got to take it. Um, I want you to watch it one more time. Great job, great catch, great moment. Watch Dennis Houston afterwards. Not the best punch. Thankfully, Brian Anger uh, is back and ready for another season with the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, so we talked offense, let's talk defense, and really just kind of one thing. The Cowboys are being smart with John Curse. You know, we're not going to see Micah Parsons blowing dudes up, things like that. Uh, but we are seeing the Cowboys defense dominate in all of the right ways. We're seeing this secondary dominate, right, even without J. Ron Curse, who, again, the Cowboys are being smart with right now. No need to, like, forget anything there. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, we've seen this cornerback room, cornerback depth kind of challenge just a little bit. Um, and, and that's okay because the Cowboys have depth to play with. It's disappointing on the one hand that Kelvin Joseph isn't playing well, that Nation Wright had a bad game last week against the Broncos. Uh, and by the way, on the Kelvin Joseph front, um, you know, we talked about it actually yesterday on Wednesday. Connor Livesy's 53 man roster prediction at blogontheboys.com. He left Kelvin Joseph off of it. Nick Eatman uh, ha had, you know, kind of a discussion along these lines at the mothership, DallasCowboys.com, recently. And he said it's not a lock that Kelvin Joseph Joseph makes the 53 man roster so definitely something worth paying attention to whether or not Kelvin even makes the team uh, generally that is impossible in a second round player second season on a team but sometimes it does happen it's just the way some things tend to go um, but but as it relates to the cornerback room the cornerback position uh, Jordan Lewis tweaked his hamstring on Wednesday we talked about that during the show it was reported late Wednesday night by the Dallas Morning News that he's probably going to miss the rest of training camp probably going to miss the rest of the preseason not that he would have played a lot anyway um, um, but that his status in week one, or rather that he's hopeful with regards to his status for week one. And obviously, we were all hoping and, and wanting Jordan Lewis to play, but but you have to ask the question, right? That's what we, we talk about all the time. You have to be prepared for the hypothetical. So the question is, what do you do if Jordan Lewis can't play? What, what's your what's your plan? What's what's your How's your feeling? Jordan Lewis is a starter on this team. He's your nickel corner. So what's going to happen? Last year, the Cowboys kicked Anthony Brown inside and let Kel Joseph obviously handle um, you know the outside, but that doesn't seem like a viable option here in 2000. 2022. So the answer seems to be Deron Bland. Deron Bland is kind of playing himself into a starting role on this team as their nickel corner in the event that Jordan Lewis is unable to go, even if he's not a starter, even if you don't define it that way. He is playing himself into a role of serious value. I know talking about myself, I'll take this L, I'll eat it, yum, yum, yum. Um, you know, when I was looking at this year's Dallas Cowboys draft class, I didn't see how Deron Bland was going to make it. And, and a lot of that, not to, you know, take away from my L eating, but it was because, you know, when you looked at the roster, you had Devon Diggs, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, and then you had Kelvin Joseph and Nation Wright entering their second seasons with the team. And it's pretty rare that second round picks don't make it their second year or third round pick with regards to Nation Wright. So it just seemed like an uphill battle. But to Deron Bland's credit, he is fighting that thing uphill, sideways, downhill, whatever the case may be. And so again, today, Thursday was kind of the first day where there were some more legitimate expectations on him, given that he may be a starter on this team or maybe called upon in a more serious role. And what did he do? He came up with an interception. Now, kind of like we talked about with the Diggs thing, like you can find a play 
thing that makes one player look good, one player look bad. I'm not trying to sit here and say that Deron Bland was just completely and totally on fire, but that was reportedly not his only interception of the day. The point is that Deron Bland is playing very well, and not just against the Chargers. He played very well last week against the Broncos. It's preseason. It's camp. That layer of context is necessary, but it's really nice to see. So kudos to the Cowboys scouting department. Kudos to the Cowboys coaching staff for finding him, for drafting him, for developing him, again, with the lens of context that we're only here in the second half of August, the beginning of the second half of August. And so it's fair to be really excited about Deron Bland, especially if the Cowboys do have to rely on somebody else. It's exciting that they have found that one of their own products, somebody who's rising and growing in their system, um, in their, you know, within their locker room, et cetera, et cetera. So that's good to see. Shout out to uh, Deron Bland. But shout out to you. Thanks for hanging out here uh, on our recap video for the second Cowboys Chargers joint practice. Um, That is it as far as joint practice practices are concerned man I had to almost scream that was a weird like reflex my body had uh but they will have a preseason game on Saturday night as mentioned that game like I said starts at 9 p.m central standard time 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific um and it will be about three hours so we'll be here for the live show burning that midnight oil all right let's have a good time make sure you subscribe here to the blog of the boys youtube channel so you don't miss anything that we're doing my name is rj ochoa you can follow me on twitter or instagram at rj ochoa you can follow me on tiktok rj.ochoa if you want to send me an email you can rj.ochoa at sbnation.com you can always leave a comment here if you'd rather just stick on youtube uh after you subscribe and like this video by the way and we'll get to those also but for now we bid you adieu and we will see you tomorrow on Friday. Let's have a good day, everybody. We love you all.